terms of pricing. I'm going to feed the animals. I opted for the 20 tickets for 15. Hey everybody, Tom here for Tom's Road Trip and I'm in Tarpon Springs, Florida, famous for the sponge docks. And I'm visiting the Tarpon Springs Aquarium. Now this is a new location that used to be down on the sponge docks area. This is a family owned business. They've been open for just about a month in their new location. So I've been wanting to come down here. This is my first chance I got to come here. Not too far, about less than a half hour from my house, which is pretty decent. So this place allows you to interact with some of the animals. You can feed them, you can touch them, and it's several different touch tanks. You can feed tarpon, you can feed sharks, you can feed stingrays and pet them. There are cat sharks, which I've never actually heard of a cat shark before. But you can pet the cat sharks, you can feed alligators, you can hold alligators. They have some interactive shows throughout the day. They use a ticket system for the feedings. Certain ones cost more between two and five tickets per feeding. This is the food you can get and the ticket amount. Alright, first up we got the tidal pool touch tank. And this is what we have in here. See lots of little fish in this part. Four separate little parts. It's a horseshoe crab. I can show you the first part is the bottom of the horseshoe crab. I mean, that is creepy looking though. Really cool though. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. The other one. Get a, it's like it's a little catfish. A little fishy fish. Yeah, spider crab berry as well. So some of these animals are buried. And there is the sharkies. You can pet them if you want. See one of the spider crabs. And another one. Yes, you can actually put your hand in there. A couple turtles. They bite people. Yeah. But so we don't hand feed them. We see the cat sharks. And the cat shark don't eggs. forget the eggs. Yeah, they, when they hatch, they're only yeah. eight inches or small. Eight inches? Eight inches. Those are the shark eggs. Cat shark. Got some serpents here. Got a reticulated python. This next name is Ka. Here we go. Reticulated python. Got some baby alligators. Yeah. Baby little babies. Oh, look at the little tiny bud. Florida banded water snake. It's having to be a high. Does have water to be? I'm just so you know. Got some Burmese python. There's two of them. Got old Yella to the right and Leo to the left. There's Leo. Albino. Awesome coloring. There's old Yella. Another Albino Burmese Python. Man, these are gorgeous snakes. Wow, these are gorgeous snakes. And they got a smaller albino Burmese python hanging out in the water named Verna. Oh, and then they got a ball python, which is a very popular pet snake because they're more manageable. And this snake's name is Monty. See, it's a lot smaller. 
We're at the turtle sanctuary. Yeah, we're at the turtle swimming by. You get dry land also to be in if they choose to. And they have some alligators, a little bit larger size alligators. And you got a green iguana. It's another invasive species in the state of Florida. And this iguana's name is Charlie. He's up here on top of the branch. Same habitat as the baby alligators. See, being as he is actually larger than the alligators, they don't bother him. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to feed the alligators. You're given a stick with a blunted hook at the end where you put the piece of hot dog on it. A little hole here you put it through. So I get a hungry alligator, so I'm going to put it through. You uh, get the thing through. Yeah, all right, I got another thing in here. Come on, alligator. Good, good, buddy. Come on, get it. So these are young alligators, so they're still learning. Come on, buddy. It's right here. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Get it here in the water for him. There we go. And he got it. And he got it. Small and work our way up, okay? All right, I'll be back in just a second. We'll get started. You see the big American alligator. In the state of Florida, you got these guys all over the place. They on, so we're good to go. We're in business. All right, guys, it's alligator show time. Um, I hope you guys are excited. I love this show. It's one of my favorite ones to do. Um, so my name is Paige. I'm going to be your gator gal for today, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Basically, we'll learn a couple things about alligators out there. This is my friend Ava, by the way. She's going to co-host the beginning of the show. And then we're going to, I'm going in. So I'm going to feed everybody you can see, the alligator snapping turtle to your left, the American alligator, uh, the little bit smaller one to your right, and this big guy back here. Their names, by the way, because why not introduce them right off the bat, are Shrek for the turtle, Sheldon for uh, my gator friend there, and Donkey is the big guy. So uh, we've got some characters in here, and I can't wait for you to meet them. But first, let's talk about Miss Ava and a little bit about gators. Has anyone here ever seen a wild alligator? Uh, most of us, right? If you're in Florida, chances are you've come across one now and again. Now, when you see your wild gators, you don't want to do basically anything you see me doing during this show. You don't want to try to pet them or grab them or feed them. Nothing like that. I always say, and it works best for kids to kind of help them realize, I say gators, they've got big teeth relatively small brain. That doesn't mean they're not intelligent in some ways. Um, you know, if you took Donkey, he's been in captivity his entire life. He was captive bred, but if you took him right now at almost 20 years old and plopped him right in the middle of the Florida swamp with nothing, no resources, no teacher, he's going to be fine. He's going to find food. He's going to be able to probably live to a ripe old age. Whereas if you took Miss Page and plopped me in the middle of the Florida swamp, oh, geez, a day and a half, I'm a goner. I'm not going to do fine under those circumstances because I'm smart in other ways. So instinctually, boy, they've got us beat. But I don't see them passing spelling tests and building skyscrapers. So we've obviously got our intelligence, too. One of the things they are not so smart about is being able to tell the difference between food we throw them and our fingers. So it's not really fair to ask them to do that. Um, you know, you're giving them meat typically, right? Throwing them chicken nuggets. How can they know the difference between the meat you're throwing them and uh, what am I made out of? Meat, right? <laughs> so you have to know that meat versus the meat on my fingers. It's just not realistic to think they can do that. Now, um, I'm going to turn your attention to Miss Ava here. And before we even do that, I grabbed an alligator egg to show you. So this is all the bigger the eggs are. 
not too big, right? And if you're looking at Ava, you can see she's not a new hatchling. It's been a while since she could fit inside an egg this small. She is already one year old. I know. Isn't she so small for a one-year-old? This is a normal size one-year-old. Alligators are vulnerable for the first few years of their life. There are a lot of predators that she would have to worry about if she were in the wild. Are you guys ready for the sad fact of the alligator show? There's only one, and then the rest of it's all happy. <laughs> they start out life, right, coming out of an egg that size, with 20 to 50 brothers and sisters in their nest. Only one to three of those babies will make it to adulthood. Now, if all 20 to 50 of every single alligator nest made it, every pond in Florida would be gator on top of gator. So it's good that they don't, but it is a little sad, too. The predators that they have to worry about include snakes, birds, otters, raccoons, turtles, fish, even bigger alligators. That's actually their number one threat. The big ones do eat the little ones. The only one on their side in the whole world is mama. Female alligators will actually stay with their babies and protect them to the best of their ability for an average of about a year. Some females will even stay. If they don't make another nest, they'll stay up to three years with those little hatchlings to try to help them survive. So that's uh, the small survival rate is with mom's help. If mom wasn't there, it, almost none would ever survive. All right. Question for you guys. Let's see who knows their gator facts. Does anybody know or want to guess how many teeth are inside an alligator's mouth? <laughs> what do we think? It's the same number on all of them. It's not like the baby's teeth grow in. I can tell you if you want. I hear some whispering over there. They're trying to figure it out saying, open Ava's mouth. Maybe we can take a peek. There it is. Count real quick. They actually have 80 sharp teeth. A lot of them. And here's my favorite fact. You always hear about how sharks can replace their teeth through their lifetime. Alligators can too. It's just a different process, different way of doing it. If Ava gets in a fight with one of her brothers and sisters and loses a tooth, well, she doesn't have to worry because another tooth will grow in its place and she'll go through hundreds if not thousands in her lifetime. Wow. Kind of neat, right? Alrighty, guys. Oh, I should say, that lifetime's long. They can live up to 80 years. And, of course, those couple little babies that make it, they're going to get big. The males can get up to 1,000 pounds, 14 feet long. And the females just under that, you know, more like uh, 10 to 12 feet long and a few hundred pounds less. Did anybody have questions before I hop in and start feeding? I think it seems like we are pretty good. All right. Well, here's, I'll, I'll just jump in there. It'll take me a minute to put Ava away, and then you'll see me coming through that door. Mm -hmm. And I think we're not going to have any trouble with this with this group. We've got mostly tall folks. Um, if you do get the urge, though, when I'm feeding in any of the enclosures, um, if you start looking like this, nobody behind you is going to get a very good view. So uh, make sure we don't rush the, the glass. All right. I'm going to take my egg. Hey guys, can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Good. That means the speaker did not lose connection. That is good news. Um, so Mr. Sky got my food for me here. I'm going to start with Shrek over there. He's a fish eater. So let's see what we've got in our bucket for old Shrekky. Mm, yeah, in the bucket out there. Okay, so these just came out of the freezer, and Scott's wanting me to wait just a minute. Because these are cold-blooded animals, um, basically, if you feed them something frozen, it can do a little more damage than if we eat something like ice. It'll take him just a sec. He's going to grab an already thawed piece. Um, I'll wait for him. While I wait, let me tell you something about that turtle. Alligator snapping turtles are the largest freshwater turtle in North America. You can see he's a big guy. We've had Shrek 26 years, and he is very accustomed to how we feed. He is used to his fish coming down on a stick from heaven, right? In the wild, they're not going to have that. They're going to have to catch their own fish, and they have a really cool trick to do that. What they'll do is lay on the bottom, looking just like a rock. He's really good at that and open up their mouth. Inside Shrek's mouth lies a little wiggly tongue. Looks almost just like a worm. He wiggles it around until a fish gets fooled and goes inside his mouth and then all of a sudden, the snap is gonna be powerful, strong, fast. 
the fish isn't going to know what hit him. And Shrek will get a nice tasty treat and then open his mouth and lure the next one in. These guys are called alligator snapping turtles. Partly because they kind of look like an alligator, kind of a gnarly face. But really, it's more because alligators are wary of them. If he got into a fight with a big gator, even one as big as Donkey, that turtle would win. Okay. He's got all his vital organs protected by shell, and yet, um, he's got that big mouth. One snap could be fatal to an alligator, so they're going to avoid him in the wild. Alright, let's see. Oh, he's got him! Perfect timing. That's alright. Maybe we'll go for two. He gets some shrimp today, which are real similar to the crawfish you might eat in the wild as well. I'm heading in. Well, howdy, Shrek. Boy, he's active today. Usually he's sound asleep. I'm going to move the driftwood and get him to come right around so everybody can get a look at that big head. Shrek's one of my favorites. These guys live a long time, and I love animals that live a long time because, uh, oh, I get so emotionally attached, I never want to lose them. And with Shrek, he's probably going to outlive there we me. Go. Block me. Thank we you. don't know his exact age because he was donated to the aquarium after being passed around as a pet. Boy, he knows I'm the food lady, doesn't he? Let's see if I can get him to walk a little bit for the shrimp. That's not walking, that's running. That's a full sprint to grab the shrimp. And let me grab that stick out of there. Shrek's one of my favorites, but you always have to remember when you're working with big animals, especially wild animals, because even though, you know, we're here providing for him, he's still a wild animal. You've got to remember to be cautious. One bite from Shrek, you know, he could take a finger really easily. So you always got to respect the animals you work with. Oh, geez, especially when their mouths are that big, but I just, I love that guy. All right, I'm going to go next door to Sheldon. Talk about another one I love. I've actually raised Sheldon since he was a hatchling. I get no credit for his mom, though. He's going to try to eat me. Watch. We'll see in just a second. Let me see the American crocodile on there. Okay, I think this should be, yeah, the smaller ones are already good. I think it should be A-OK -okay for Sheldon. I'm going to grab one of these smaller sized fish. Sheldon is what I call a toe biter. He can't seem to know the difference between my toes and the food. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take... This is my toe defense, this stick here. And you can tell Sheldon has bitten the end of it more than once. Um, that's just to make sure that I leave with all ten toes. All right, here we go. Oh, he's right here on the land. All right, I got to back him up into the water. Excuse me, sir. Back up, please. Oh, you can tell he's not scared of me. He's trying to go around the stick. Into the water, my friend. Hop in the water and we'll all feel a little better. Sheldon's a young male. He's not quite to maturity yet. But boy, he's a, an aggressive individual. Lively. I like him lively. There you go, buddy. Let's get a couple jumps from him. Look at that. You see how he stands on his hind legs and then uses his tail to jump up. All right, one more time and you got it, buddy. One more little. Oh, almost. There we go. And one tip of the head. That fish is going to go down the hatch. Alligators swallow everything whole. And if they catch something too big to swallow whole, they do what's called the death roll. They're going to grab onto a chunk of it, roll, 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 till it rips off, and then swallow that chunk whole, and then they'll go in for more. All right, bud. I think he's pretty satisfied with that fish. I think he did a really good job. I'm going to go next door to Donkey. Good luck. <laughs> She's like, you're too active. I'm going over here. <laughs> okay, my friend. 
Now, Donkey lately, you can tell by his size, is a, has been well fed. He's put on a little bit of weight, and I have found in this springtime where the nights are still getting cool, he's not digesting super quickly. So he's been less motivated by food and more motivated by territory. Alligators are very territorial. If Donkey was in the wild and another male alligator came into his territory, they fight. Sometimes to the death. Typically, the loser is going to go off and find his own space, though, before it goes to a lethal fight. Um, I'm going to get in there and see what happens. Oh, thanks, kid. I am going to use this net because Donkey's got something like a territorial dispute with it, and it can sometimes coax him into the water when the food can't. Thankfully, he's facing that way, so I can get in there pretty safely. All right. <laughs> Now, before I start messing with him, this guy gives you a false sense of security. He looks like he's a, you know, a big chubby guy. He's never going to be able to move fast at all. And then, if we start, he might be asleep here, but if we start kind of waking him up, he can move. He can move quickly and relatively accurately. I know this net is basically held together with zip ties because he's killed it before. Hey buddy, come on in the water for me. Come on down, the water's fine. Look at that. There's your photo, right? Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna get behind here. Let me see if I can get him in the water. I don't want him coming in here with me because then I'm gonna be the one that's getting in the water. Hey buddy. Now he's backing away from the cold, I think. The water, let me feel. Yeah, the water's pretty cool compared to the air. So he's gotten himself all warmed up in the sun and he's saying, I do not want to get in that water. Don't put that cold water on my face. Let me see if I can get him to hop in. Because if he doesn't get in, we don't feed him. He's already got enough weight on him. He has to at least exercise enough to get into the water for the food. Alligators are lazy by nature. Opportunistic eaters, they're going to be oh, on the lazy side. He's quick, isn't he? I can't always move the net fast enough. But at least we'll see him with a little bit of interaction here. By the way, I'll tell you a little story. That net that Mr. Scott's got right, or that uh, gate, I should say, that Mr. Scott's behind, um, we put that up because twice, we were just walking from enclosure to enclosure, and he's in the water, and he decided, uh-uh, not today. And he chased us out, as it happened to me. I just happened to glance at him and saw, oh, he's going to go. And then ran, ran, shut the door, and behind the door I heard a bang, like Jurassic Park or something. Oh, my so we had to add the gate to uh, make sure we could access the other animals' enclosure safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did it to Scott as well. I think, Scott, we might have gotten it on video. All right. Oh, oh give that back. Right. Thank you. You can tell he doesn't want to eat this. He just wants it out of, out of here. Well, buddy, I'll give you one more shot, but I'm not feeding you unless you get in the water. I love you to bits, but you're getting as wide as you are long. <laughs> there we go. Come on, handsome. I know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're going to try the whirlpool. Sometimes that that looks a little interesting. Sometimes that gets him in. Whirlpool, not looking good. <laughs> no, he's going back to sleep, even though there's a whirlpool in there. I don't know if I can interest him enough. At least we got to see some of that power, right? And I will mention, with a big gator like that, it's not just the teeth you gotta look out for. A side swipe from that muscular tail could break your leg. That's a powerful animal, and not one I care to mess too much with. Now I've turned him around, though, I'm gonna make my, my escape out of the enclosure potentially interesting. But we'll see what happens. I will use the net as a defense, if need be. 
Oh, no, he's he's pretty. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, we better get out of here. He's coming for me. Just slowly. <laughs> All right. Hey, what? Yeah, he's saying get out of here. He's not necessarily going to come bite me, but he's saying, hey, I could come bite you. You better get out of here, turning his head towards me and stuff. Would you guys maybe be interested in petting and holding an alligator? Awesome! Oh, I saw some of these hands. That's the best. And a hand up there? Great. Um, I'm going to grab out one of the ones you guys have been feeding hot dogs over there. They're nice and cheeky and happy, and uh, they'll put on a really good little uh, little show for us out there. We'll let you hold them and pet them. I'm going to bring them around here in just... There's the one alligator. So this is Snapping Turtle. Nibble, nibble, and we... His story is he was a wild alligator. And um, sometimes wild alligators, if you live in Florida, you might have experienced this before. They have a tendency to get where they're not supposed to be. Um, under a house, far from the water somehow. Something like that can happen. And Nibble was called, the, uh, you know, this they called the state. They were like, hey, we got an alligator. I'm not sure. I think he was on the front gate of a library or something like that, somewhere crazy. And uh, the trapper came out to get him. You know, obviously not a very hard trapper situation, considering usually they deal with stuff more like that. And so um, they grab Nibble, and typically alligators that are called, and you should probably know this if you ever call about an alligator, they're almost always euthanized. So it is sad, you know, you never want to feed them. That's another reason not to feed them. You might be giving them a death sentence if they start behaving in a certain way that uh, somebody's going to call on them. Uh, they will be killed. So uh, he said, this doesn't look like much of a threat, does it? Um, so he called us up, asked us if we wanted them. We said, yeah. And um, we've got a couple other little gators in there that have a very similar story. We've got a relationship with a couple different gator trappers. Now, we are going to put a little tape on the mouth. It's electrical tape. It doesn't stick to his skin so much as it sticks to itself. And that's just because Nibble, oh, there you go. Nibble, um, you know, he's got pretty sharp teeth in there. And at this size, he could do a little bit of damage to some precious little fingers. So we're not going to make sure that's not going to happen. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. All righty. So, you guys are going to get to hold him and take some pictures. We'll come up one at a time or maybe siblings at a time. Does anybody want to volunteer to go first? Come on up, bud. Come on, put him. We have a brave volunteer here. You stand right here front and center. And I should warn, and probably not you because it's early on yet, but everybody, you either have, typically with a little gator, I've learned they're either a wiggler or a peer. And he's the latter. So um, we can prevent that when you're holding him. Hold the base of the tail and the armpit. If you squeeze the middle, there's a lot of hot dogs in there. Something might squish out. So uh, we don't want to squeeze the tummy. All right, buddy. So one hand under the tail. We get the stingray touching feed tank. We've got cow nose ray and Atlantic stingray. You see them all screwing around. Wanting to be petted. Kurt's probably looking for food. Got some nice little fishies in here too. They're very, very soft. Very, very, very soft. I want to get a picture of that. Okay, right, we got the big fish in here. Got a Goliath grouper here also named Oscar. That is one big fish. Now this is salt water. It's not going to be clear. This natural color. 
All right, so I got some food to feed the tarpon, and I'm wearing a glove to protect my hand. So I got my piece of food. I'm gonna throw it in the water. There we go. There we go. We'll throw another piece. Woo! Doesn't last long at all. All right, last piece. <laughs> boy, oh boy, he definitely can jump. So what else would you expect from Tarpon Springs but Tarpon? Alright, we're in the underwater viewing area of that tank I was just at. The big old Goliath Rooper and the Tarpon. we are in Tarpon Springs, so this is the fish. This big giant grouper. Yes, sir. What's up, man? And this other tank. Add some other fish and you got a lemon shark.
right, back here we got the shark tank. It's definitely a feeding tank, it's not a touch tank. You want to get bitten by a shark. That wouldn't be good. Alright, so we got nurse shark. We got stingray food, I got two cups, three tickets each. So six tickets for the three cups, I mean for two cups. That's a little piece of shrimp. So put down in the water. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. It's right there. Oh, uh, hold it in your hand and it can suck it off your hand like that. You have to hold it in your hand and it come like backing it up. You suck it up. It feels funny. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh my God, I feel it. It's on the ground. Yeah, suck it up. Oh my God, that's Got it. Yeah, you don't want to do this? Let's go. It kind of floats a little bit. See, their mouths are on the bottom. Yeah, mouths are on the bottom. All right, last piece I got. There you go. There you go. Yes, their mouths are on the bottom. They're very, very easy. You don't bite your fingers or nothing. You kind of just uh, suck the suck the food out of your fingers. See so if you can see it on the bottom. So you can see what her mouth is. I'm trying to show you where the mouth is. Here we go, right on the bottom. There we go. I'd like to be petted too. Petted, yeah, pet you. See, see, there's, there's his mouth. You do have a hand wash station for you to use. If you touch all the fish and stuff, get it off your fingers. So you see the alligator snapping turtle. His name is Shrek. This is him. That's that's a pretty good alligator snapping turtle. It's a good size. An American alligator. Saw him in the alligator show. You know his name is Donkey. Good size. Information on alligator versus crocodile. Those are Looks like someone lost their fishing stick inside the alligator pond. Oh, right there. Oh my gosh, Carly, look. Okay, we gotta watch. There's a two o'clock show. We got some Adabra giant tortoise. Right. Also got a red-footed tortoise. This me bubble. Got water to be in also. You can see all of the alligators. I let the lady that did the alligator show know about the the stick that's in there with them. It's not going to hurt them, but it's not something that should be in the habitat with them. I do love alligators. Big part of being in Florida is alligators. Got the tarpon. One last time. Let's 
trying to get a better view of the grouper. It's kind of off to the side still. There we go. Come on out, buddy. There you go. Good boy or girl. That is one big fish. Woo, that's a big fishy. Big, 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 big fish. people right above me on the boardwalk. There is the big tank. We're waiting to try and see the turkey again. Just hoping someone's going to feed him. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Say goodbye to our Goliath grouper. Carpin and several other different types of fish in here. All right, I just got outside of the Tarpon Springs Aquarium. Had a nice time. Not a huge facility, but they actually have a pretty decent assortment to see. Face masks are required on premises. Uh, probably noticed I didn't get a hat. There are no hats available there, which is not a big deal. I do like to get hats in different places I go to, but since it's still a new establishment, hopefully they'll get hats in the future. But anyway, if you like what you saw, give the video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoyed what you saw. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I upload new videos every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love hearing from people, so leave me some comments down below what your favorite animal was that we saw here today. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.